What is up, you two people? It's your boy, Patty McNinja, and I know it feels like we just talked about College Football 25 the other day, but we just got another sports video game that I've played and I want to talk about. I know a lot of gamers aren't huge fans of sports games, but I do play a lot of Madden, and we just got the new Madden, Madden 25, and of course, I've played it and I want to talk about it. So without further ado, let's rock. A quick disclaimer before we get started, very similar to my uh, College Football 25 review where that video was basically just me reviewing Road to Glory. I'm basically just going to review Madden 25 franchise mode, where in College Football 25, I had at least until the point I had recorded that video, had only played Road to Glory. Since then, I've played a ton of Dynasty, but in Madden, I literally only play franchise mode. I don't play Mutt. I haven't played online games in forever, at least when it comes to Madden. So franchise mode is the only thing that I play. I love doing realistic rebuilds, playing that pretend G. It's really fun to me. So I will touch on gameplay and graphics, but they will be through the lens of playing franchise mode. Most of this discussion will be new features or lack thereof in Madden 25's franchise mode. Many of you probably know, especially if you watched the same video last year, I grew up playing Madden but I also played NFL Game Day, NFL Fever, and of course, the GOAT of all football sim games, NFL 2K5. So I've had the pleasure and now the curse of knowing how good these games can be when there's legit competition in the marketplace. So please keep that in mind while I talk about this new Madden game, because spoiler alert, I'm mostly gonna be positive because like the last few years, Madden 25 is technically better than the game before. And when you have these yearly releases, that's kind of how you need to judge these releases. Is it better than the game before it? And technically, yes, Madden 25 is better than Madden 24. However, all of that being said, Madden is still a shell of its former glory. It feels like we're slowly crawling back to where it was 15, 20 years ago. And I do think that that's a, a good place to start because I am always curious every year to see what changes are coming to Madden franchise. Unfortunately, a lot of them are just stuff that they're bringing back to the game that they took out for no reason. But I was especially curious this year because of how much I enjoyed enjoyed college football 25 that game has been a huge success for ea and madden 25 definitely needed to come out and keep pace with that game it would have felt very weird if college football 25 came out and then madden was just a complete stinker it would have felt really weird and, and unbalanced and overall i i think they did a commendable job doing just that especially when it comes to a big part of the gameplay that i praised during my college football 25 video but we'll get to that later in this video again these madden games and now college football games only have a little less than a year to develop so there's only so much any one team can do in that amount of time when it comes to video games we've definitely seen bigger leaps in past years and it feels like madden 25 spent most of their blood sweat and tears into cleaning up the presentation versus giving us a ton of new features the franchise UI looks a lot different this year. In my opinion, it's for the better. And that just simply could be because the UI has looked exactly the same for so long that I'm just happy to see something different for once, but I do like it. It's been a minute since I've played Madden 24, but it does seem like there's a lot more info available on that first home screen in Madden 25, so that's good. Some of that has to do with the fact that there's a new message feature on that hub that will give you details on the upcoming opponent, player storylines, etc. I was actually pleasantly surprised to see that there was actually info about players on other teams not signing new contracts. So it kind of gives you a heads up for free agency coming up. I thought that was a pretty cool feature. And overall, I do like the message feature. I think it's a cool little uh, touch that they added to this game. However, I did kind of forget about it after a while. There's also a top story slider on the right, which can be kind of helpful. 
That being said, the rest of the tabs are exactly the same. They also added a new coat of paint to the scenarios as well. Most of the scenarios themselves aren't that much different than the ones we've seen in the past. However, how they present those scenarios are a lot different. You still have the press conferences, even though it looks a lot better than it has in the past games. There's also new scenarios in the practice field, the coach's office, and my personal favorite where they'll actually have these scenarios during team meetings where you'll actually collab with your players on how to attack your next opponent. I thought that was a really cool feature. It's certainly a much needed breath of fresh air when it came to these scenarios. However, if you play franchise as much as I do, you will of course see most of these several times throughout a rebuild. And you will get most of your new scenarios at the start of the season. It does feel like there's that same like three or four or even five that hit you at the beginning of every season and then the frequency that you see the scenarios kind of dies out throughout the season you you don't get as many you might get those player meetings every so often you might also get a one-on-one -on -one player meeting in your office where a player is upset and they want the ball more or something like that throughout the season but they're few and far between most of them will be at the start of the new season there's some that will run throughout the season and then we'll kind of check back to after the season so you'll kind of need to pay pay attention to those as you go along there are also some off-season scenarios as well but those don't feel as important as the others I do want to point out, since I do a lot of realistic rebuilds, I only play a few games during the season. And mostly that's because I do like the free agency. I like the drafting. I like the trading. All that stuff is really fun to me. But at the end of the day, it's still a video game and I'm very good at the game. So if I played every single game, I would just go 17 and 0 every season. And obviously that wouldn't be very realistic. There are certain scenarios where there's these press conferences where the press will actually ask you how the last game went and they will ask you particular questions about the game. And so it does get a little tricky because I don't play all the games. I don't always know what happened in the game. So if you answer one of those questions wrong, it will affect your morale. So I would suggest making sure that you at least look at what happened during each game in case you do get one of these press conference scenarios pop up. EA also gave the scouting reports on the rookie class a facelift as well, which was much needed. The way that you actually scout rookies with the area scouts and how each scout and regions have their own positional strengths and weaknesses, none of that has changed. So at its core, it's still the exact same system. This change is just purely cosmetic and quality of life to the layout of how you actually look at the prospects and how well they did with their, their combine and pro day and so on and so forth. You could actually now change the info you see and sort when looking at prospects. So if you want to sort by just 40 time, which I wouldn't suggest because 40 time, I think is in my opinion, the most overrated stat in the NFL. But if that's how you want to build your team, just by having a bunch of fast people may or may not be able to play football, you can do that now. And it makes it very easy to sort by that. And you can sort by particular position and stat or just overall draft class. If you just want the literal fastest guy in the draft class you can do that as well you can also add players to your favorites again you could do that in the past game but you can actually base it on those stats my one big critique outside of the fact that nothing actually has changed in the way that you scout is that you can't rearrange your favorites so once you add a favorite you can sort them differently by like round or stat or whatever when they're in their favorites but maybe I'm just dumb. It's always a real possibility when it comes to me in video games and I just couldn't figure it out. But you literally cannot change the order in which your favorites are listed outside of just sorting it by a particular stat, which I found very odd because they do let you do that with their your recruiting class in College Football 25. So why not give us something similar in Madden 25? It just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. However, I kind of saved the biggest cosmetic change for last and that is the draft presentation 
So you have a full draft board at all times. So you can actually see the teams coming up and who's been drafted in that round. A slight nitpick. It is kind of tough to see the actual positions and the names of the players because it's a big draft board and you only have a certain screen to, to look at this. So it is a little hard to read some of the, the player names and positions. And I also, again, I could just be dumb and can't figure it out, but I haven't found a way to actually look back on previous rounds. So it is kind of hard to see who's been drafted from that team in previous rounds. So you can only see the draft board for that particular round. However, they did actually bring in Roger Goodell. You don't hear any booing when he's presenting this stuff. So that's obviously not that realistic. However, he does dap up anyone drafted in the first round. Outside of that, they will show the draftees with the team hat in their house, which I thought was really, really cool. Cause if you're a football sicko like me, you probably watch a lot of draft coverage and that's pretty much exactly what happens. They also will occasionally will show the draft war room celebrate when they draft somebody. So that's also cool. Again, kind of the way that I was talking about the scouting, it doesn't change how you actually draft the players, but it's for sure a welcome change to the presentation that has become very, very stale over the last few years. They will also grade your draft picks as you go along. I will say, not sure I agree with their grades. They've given me really shitty grades only to find out that the guy that I drafted in the fifth round had a 70 plus overall. Maybe it's just my realistic rebuild mindset, but when I'm drafting a guy in the fifth round, I'm just looking for a cost controlled backup. I'm looking for a guy that can play special teams that can come in in a pinch when my starter gets hurt and he's not getting completely cooked out there. So for me, a 70 overall is a great backup. So the fact that I'm getting shit on with these grades because I drafted a 70 in the fifth round doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. Unfortunately, there's still no comp picks in Madden 25, and I, I do want to give them a slight benefit of the doubt. I do know that the, the NFL comp pick formula is a bit complicated, so I, I do want to give them a slight benefit of the doubt. I'm not going to sit here and say, even though I am a, an NFL sicko, I, it's one of the things that I don't really understand all that well. I know the general idea of it, but... I know it can be a little complicated, so I get why it's not in Madden, but you could easily just simplify it. For example, if you have a 75 plus overall player leaves in free agency, you get a fifth, sixth round pick, whatever they want to make it. And if you have an 85 plus overall player leaves, you get this pick and so on and so forth. Like they could just make it that simple. It doesn't have to be as complicated as the NFL makes it. It really just doesn't have to be that hard. But then again, it would involve them creating AI that dictates what pick you get based on what player has left. And I obviously there are teams and, and, and players that could kind of cheese that AI because AI in Madden has famously not been very good. You still see four, three teams sign clear edge rushers to play off ball linebackers because the AI still hasn't figured that out. So I have zero faith that if they did add comp picks, they would actually get it right and it would actually work the way that it's supposed to work. Speaking of free agency, it's literally exactly the same. Same with the coaches skill tree. I like that they tweaked both free agency and put in the coaches skill tree a few years ago, but don't just forget about them. EA has this really bad habit of adding something and then President Bush style saying mission accomplished and then leaving it just to become stale years later. Just because you made the free agency and coaches skill tree good doesn't mean you can't approve upon them. They were good ideas. I like what they did a few years ago, but don't let them just go stale. You have to continually improve upon these features that you throw in to sell new games. Moving on, I think that's about all the franchise mode specific things I wanted to talk about. Let's move on to how the game actually plays. And despite all that talk about boom tech or whatever stupid name they want to call it, I do think that Madden 25, for better or for worse, plays a lot like Madden 24. And I'm probably going to get some shit for this, but I actually think that it's okay. Like, I think as, as far as a football sim goes, I think that it plays pretty well. 
Yes, there are a few glitches, but nothing that broke my immersion that much. I actually thought there was a lot more of that kind of stuff in College Football 25 than there was in Madden 25. Of course, it is a video game, so there's always going to be a meta. There is always going to be some things that you can do to cheese the game if you want. And people are always going to complain, well, the run game is too OP in this game, or this playbook is too OP, or so on and so forth. Again, I do realistic rebuilds with an eye on the realism, so I tend to stay away from that type of stuff. If I know that the run game is super OP, if the, the stretch play will get you 10 to 15 yards pretty much every time that you do it, I'm just not going to run that play all that often because I do have that eye towards uh, being realistic. At the end of the day, there will always be a way to cheese Madden because it's a video game. And if that's your grading scale when you're talking about the gameplay in Madden, you're going to always hate Madden because it's a video game and there's always going to be a ways to cheese the game. The biggest thing for me personally that I wanted to see this year that I was really psyched to see was how was college football 25, especially when it came to the gameplay, going to affect how Madden played. And if you watch my college football 25 review, you know that I was really, really impressed with how that game handled pass pro. You were going to get absolutely destroyed in that game if you couldn't read the coverages and identify the mic and slide the pr protection accordingly. As a self-described football sicko, I absolutely love that. I never thought that th we would have a football sim game that had pass protection as such a, a, a core component of that game. And I was really, really hoping that they would take that pass pro system in College Football 25 and bring it to Madden. And I'm super psyched to report that they did just that. Outside of just being excited for the college football game coming back in general, the biggest thing I was looking forward to with those games was I knew, even though it's made by the same studio, I knew that if the college football game was good, not only are we going to get another good football game, which being a football fan, I was excited for, but I was also excited for them just kind of pushing each other to get better. It's EA, so I don't want to give them any credit because they don't deserve any benefit of the doubt, but it's a really bad look to put a cool new feature in a college football game, but then not put that, that same feature in Madden and vice versa. So I'm really hoping and based on college football 25 and now Madden 25, it does give me hope that these, these games are going to push each other and so far so good in that sense. I also love the new playbooks that they put into Madden 25, especially the cheat motion. Each year, it feels like they make all these grand promises that they're going to add new plays and playbooks. This was the first year that it actually felt like they delivered on those promises. I've been having a blast with these new playbooks, especially again with the cheat motion. The Miami Dolphins are a fun team to watch for a reason. And I think a lot of that has to do with, of course, having Tyree kill, but also just having this really innovative playbook and being able to play with that playbook in Madden. And it, it just adds an element of fun to the game that I wasn't expecting. They also added, among other things, one handed spectacular catches which are cool when they work, but I hardly try them because more often than not, they just drop them. I also want to denote the aggressive catch also feels like it's a drop eight out of 10 times. It feels like it's it's a, a drop more often than not in this game versus the older game. So maybe they can tweak that a little bit in an update. You can also now change the depth of routes in the hot route menu pre-snap, which I was always so annoying to me when you would call the right play on third and long, but the wide receiver would not run the, the route past the sticks. If I had a nickel for every real life football game I have watched where the commentator complained about a wide receiver running a route short of the sticks on third down, I would be recording this video on my yacht. So it was really nice to see that we can now change that in Madden 25. Again, it just adds a tiny bit more realism to this football sim game. Speaking of commentary, we finally have two new commentary teams. Holla fucking Luya. 
I do actually like Charles Davis and Brian Godden. I know that a lot of people don't. I am a big Georgia Tech fan, and Brandon Guyton used to call their game, so I'm a bit biased. I do think that they do a good job. I know that they're super annoying because they're the only ones we ever hear, and we play these games a lot, and they constantly say the same thing over and over again. I get it, but I actually do think that they do a good job. It's just that the two of them have been in these games since Madden 17. And again, if you watch a lot of football, you don't always hear the same team every game. It's actually rare, very rare, to hear the same team of commentators unless it's the primetime crew on multiple games. So it's nice that you kind of have this rotation in Madden 25 now. I'm also a pretty big fan of Greg Olson, not just because he was a former Bear. We should have never traded him. I'll never forgive them for that because he was a great tight end and we had him and we gave him away for nothing, but also I think he's a good color commentator as well. So uh, I like that they threw in two new teams. Now, outside of just having the new crews and having those new voices, which are great, the actual content of what they are saying is just mid. But again, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. You only have so much time to record stuff, so you're only going to get better. The reason Charles Davis and Brandon Gaiden stuff is good and there's a lot of stuff that they say throughout the games is because they've had so many years to record all this stuff so to be honest i play so much of this game that after a while i usually just end up listening to my elder emo uh shit on on spotify i don't really listen to the commentators so i don't really this change isn't a big deal to me but it is just kind of a nice thing that they added and hopefully it gets better as the games go along as they have more chance to record some more commentary so in conclusion in a vacuum madden 25 franchise is a better experience than it is in madden 24. they cleaned up the presentation added new commentary teams and playbooks and brought gameplay features that I loved from College Football 25 to Madden. All of those things should be applauded. However, it's still nowhere near where it should be. Both of those things can be true at the same time. Therefore, I could not give it a high star rating. So I'm only going to give it three stars, which is funny because if I remember correctly, I actually gave Madden 24 a higher star rating. I think a slightly higher star rating. I may have given it three and a half stars. Don't know what I was smoking because again, the franchise mode in Madden 25 is slightly better than it is in Madden 24. So I feel like I'm kind of resetting with this star rating and hopefully moving forward, we can continue to have this conversation where next year I talk about Madden 26 being maybe more than slightly better, but at the very least being slightly better than Madden 25. But as always, those are just my thoughts on Madden 25's franchise mode. I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. Of course, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that like button as the kids say. If you did enjoy the video, which you probably did since you've made it this far in the video, definitely consider subscribing and dinging that bell that way you get notified every time i post another video I try to post weekly gaming related content so if you like that type of content which again you probably do since you've made it this far in the video definitely consider subscribing and dinging that bell but until next video take it easy what's up youtube people it's your boy patty mcninja and this is my boy yoshi aka kitty boy and we were just talking and we agree that since you made it this far in the video you might as well subscribe you wouldn't want to disappoint Kitty Boy, would you?